changes and I just think 15 drinks in a day is a lot, you know, for anybody, isn't it? Welcome back in front of the Red Sofa Travel Fans. It is Sunday, January 26th, and today on the very unofficial travel guide, Sunday Sofa Time, I'm gonna tell you how much money I spent on my carnival cruise. I am in the middle of the, my, I guess you would say, series of videos about our Carnival Sunrise cruise. So, like four weeks ago, we were on this cruise. It was a four-night cruise, leaving my, no, Fort Lauderdale, visiting Nassau in the Bahamas and um, Princess Keys in the Bahamas, and with one sea day, and then back to Fort Lauderdale. It was our first ever carnival cruise and was full of a lot of really positive surprises. And during the week, I'm uploading like vlogs and daily videos from like what happened each day, plus the cabin tour and the Lido deck tour and the inside of the ship tour and the room service video and the food guide video, all kinds of videos. And then on Sundays, I sit down here in front of my red sofa at home and talk about um, other things that I don't necessarily have like, you know, 10 minutes of video footage of, but that I think are important. And today is one of those days. Today, I wanna show you everything that I bought on board, all the money I spent to help you get an idea of, you know, what it is you spend money on and how much money you might spend. Let me just prepare you for something in advance. When I get done listing all the daily uh, things that I spent money on, uh, I'm gonna tell you about a, an opportunity that I missed um, to have yeah, settled the bill in a different way. I have here my printout, my invoice. Uh, this is what we received uh, late at night on the last night of the cruise. That's what happens on all cruises. You get this either like folded up and stuck in your door number or it slid under your door in an envelope. This will tell you, yeah, it's an itemized bill of everything you've charged to your account while on the cruise and how much it cost. So like I said, I thought I'd go through this like day by day, uh, bit by bit, and just show you around. The first day of the cruise was January 2nd. So we flew from Germany to Florida on the 1st of January. This is how our year began with a cruise. Let's just go through here. So the first one is a refund taxes, fees, and port expenses credit of $12.45. I honestly can't tell you what that is or what that means. If anybody knows what that is, let me know. The next thing is cruise cash, $25. This was actually a gift that one of you sent to us. So thank you so much, Louise. That was a very nice surprise and we used it to have a drink. Almost all cruise lines offer a possibility for people who are not going on the cruise to gift people who are on the cruise. And I made a video about that as well. Uh, you can look for it in my library. It's actually a Sunday sofa time from like maybe you know, five or six weeks ago. And if I think about it, I'll link it in the card up here and in the description below. All right, the first money that we actually spent on board was at the par pool bar New World, which is way at the back of the ship. And I bought Marcus and I a round of beers for Sail Away, and that was nice. And so two beers plus the automatic gratuity plus a little bit of gratuity that I added, um, I think I added a gratuity, I'm not sure, uh, cost $16.26. Then, um, well, you know what, before I move on, let me just mention that almost all of these charges, almost all of them, are things that were, uh, you know, not necessary. So if you are going on a cruise with a very small budget and you're worried about how much you're going to spend, just remember that almost all of these things are not things that you need to spend money on. If you don't want these things, then you won't spend the money. You know what I mean? And as I go through the list, I'll tell you which are things that like are unavoidable basically, okay? So two beers, 1626. The next thing that I purchased was uh, the internet package. That cost $48 and it was, I think they were offering three different packages on board. One was like only for, uh, you know, one was like a very small package and it was only, you know, like uh, WhatsApp, anything with like text. The next one involved like being able to upload pictures and things like that. And that's the one I got. And then there was a higher one that allowed uh, like streaming, like you could watch Netflix and stuff like that. So $48 was the cost for the 
entire cruise. And I have to say, compared to other internet packages I've had, I thought that was reasonable. Moving on, more cocktails. So I had, uh, yeah, some kind of cocktail in the Capital Bar. I can't remember what it was right now, but I'll be showing it in the daily videos. I think anytime, almost every time I got a drink, I show the drink and I show what it costs, just to give you an idea as you're watching the videos as well, the, like the vlogs. Um, what was going on as far as that goes. So there, the cocktail cost eleven seventy four. I know the, there's these weird prices and it's because if the cocktail costs, you know, like, you know, like nine fifty or ten fifty or whatever, there's always an automatic gratuity added to the cocktail. That is something you can't avoid. So if you basically buy anything on board, there's going to be money added to it as well. It's annoying, but it is just, that's how cruising works. So I ordered some cocktail at the Capital Bar. I paid eleven seventy four for it, and I added one dollar of tip to it because I'm a nice guy. And that was all, geez, was that all the first day? Hmm. So I had a few drinks the first day. And actually, I remember now that when we woke up the next day, both Marcus and I were thinking, okay, we probably could have had one less drink. So back to that day, I also ordered a cocktail at the Red Frog Pub Bar, which is up on the pool deck. So on, on the main pool area, that is where you'll have Guy's Burgers and the Blue Iguana Cantina. And then they also have two sort of differently themed tropical bars out there. It was a really cool atmosphere. I really enjoyed it. And yeah, that's where I got at 9.53 p.m. Another cocktail and I added a dollar gratuity to it. That was the end of the night. So yeah, that was that day. Oh, you know what? I skipped something here. It says Winter Club Activity. That is... Um, I put a hundred dollars of cash onto my casino card so we could play in the casino. So basically none of the things that I just listed are things that you would need to spend money on on the cruise. These are all things I wanted and so I got it. But if you were planning to spend like almost no money once you got on board, then just don't do any of these things and there you go. Moving on to day two. Uh, the first thing I uh, spent money on was at 6.55 p.m. So that's a reasonable hour, isn't it? For the first drink of the day, some kind of cocktail at the Skybox Bar, which was the sports bar on board, which is right next to the casino. And they had many very large television scre screens and there were some important American football games going on when we were on board because that was a very hopping area. 11.74 plus $1 tip. Then we move on to the next cocktail of the night at 9.03. So yeah, I sipped on that first cocktail for a while. At 9.03 and at 10.07, um, I had some more drinks in the World's Way Bar. I can't remember exactly where on the ship that is, but one of them cost $12.39. What a strange price. And the other one was fourteen. 16 and I guess for whatever reason I only gave a tip for one of them and that was a dollar tip and Yeah, and that was all I spent money on that day And you know at this point maybe it would be interesting to talk about the drink price or the drink package prices Carnival like many other cruise lines offers a uh, like an unlimited cocktail package It's not really unlimited. It's limited to 15 cocktails a day and I mean if you are drinking 15 cocktails a day, you might want to talk to somebody about that. They call it unlimited, but there is a limit of 15 cocktails a day. And depending on the length of the cruise that you are on, on Carnival, it costs between like 52 and $60 a day. And it's one thing that Marcus and I always consider. And if you cruise on like NCL, Norwegian Cruise Lines, a lot of times you can get it included in the price of your cruise. And you know, for us, when you think that I had, on, you know, on the second day, I had three, let me go through here again, I had one, two, three drinks. Let me add this all up. Hey Siri, what's 1174 plus 1239 plus 1416? Yeah, it's $38.29 and I was, you know, I was done. I had those three cocktails. And the night was over for me, and I only spent $38.29, including the tips and the extra tips. So I just feel like that drink package for me is not worth it or wasn't worth it on this cruise because, um, yeah, just because of the length and, and because of other factors that I've also talked about in a video about 
the drink packages. So I just thought I'd put that out there. And you know, I'm not judging if you're somebody who likes to drink a lot. You know, I know a lot of people in their like normal life at home, they you know, they, they very rarely have a drink. And then when you go on vacation, it's like the time when you're like gonna go for it. And you know, that's cool with me. I, you know, I like to party as well, but for me, my limit is like three cocktails and then I'm done. And I've seen people complain about, you know, the limits on these drink packages and I just think 15 drinks in a day is a lot, you know, for anybody, isn't it? But before I move on to the next day, you know what time it is. It's time for a little commercial break right here. If you saw a commercial, write what it was in the comments below so I know what it is YouTube thinks you're interested in. I'm stalking you now too. Let's move on to day, well, to January 4th. This is something, this is one of the charges that is basically mandatory. And I don't know why it was first charged on the 4th, but what it is is it's gratuities for your team members. So when you go stay at a resort like in Las Vegas, you'll pay like the daily price of the room, like Las Vegas or Miami. Um, there's hidden fees, well, that are not hidden anymore because everybody knows about them now, but it, they usually call it a resort fee. So like the room is like 150 a night and then there's a daily resort fee of $25. And they say that's for, you know, keeping the pool clean and for you know, the free internet at the resort or whatever. And on a cruise ship, it's the same thing. There is a daily fee that will be added to your cruise once you get on board. And um, it is to, it's like a tip for the people cleaning the rooms, the people cleaning the hallways, the, you know, the, the waiters and the bar staff and things like that. So of course you can tip these people individually, but there will be a um, daily you know, gratuity added to your bill. Technically, you can go to guest services and get that removed, but then it would be customary to still tip these people that you've had contact with, you know, like the people who clean your cabin every day. And then we move on to uh, 5.40 p.m. where we had, I think that must be a beer, that was way too inexpensive for a cocktail, at the pool bar New World, which is that uh, bar at the back of the ship, again, by the smaller pool, had some kind of beer for $7.97. And that was, this is interesting. Oh, I see now. That was the day that we were on Prince's Key. And I ordered a bottle of water while we were on the island, a small bottle, and that cost $2.45. But that was booked to the um, to my account later in the day. And that's why it shows up after the beer that I had. So that was 2.45, I gave the guy a 50 cent tip, plus the extra tip that was already added to it. And later in that night was the first time that we went to the Alchemy Bar at 9.05. And you know, a lot of you were suggesting uh, and recommending that we go to the Alchemy Bar, and I, I don't know why it took us so long to go there, because once we got there, I thought it was really cool. They have, uh, yeah, just some really interesting flavor combinations, and each drink is mixed separately and with a little bit of flair. So thank you everybody who suggested the Alchemy Bar. We really enjoyed going there. And the first drink I had there was $12.92 and I gave an extra tip. The next drink about an hour later, also at the Alchemy Bar, was $12.92 and I also had uh, added a dollar tip to that just because it was just so cool to watch them make it, you know? It was like, it's like gourmet cocktails, you know what I mean? Then, ooh, that was a late night at 11.25. Um, had one more drink in the Liquid Lounge Bar. It was only 7.38, so I don't know, did I drink a beer at the end of the night? That's not like me. But let's add all these drinks up because I think this is the, probably the day that I spent the most money on drinks. Let's add this up again. Uh, where does it start here? Hey Siri, what's 7.97 plus 2.45 plus 12.92, plus 12.92, plus 7.38. No, it's uh, 43.64, so still under the price of the drink package. And yeah, there, there's no way I would have tolerated more alcohol than that in one day. So for me, I feel good about not getting the drink package on this cruise. All right, moving on to the final day on board. Yeah, an expense that's definitely not necessary. I booked a massage. So 
this is going to surprise some of you perhaps because I've made a video about how I think you should never book a massage on a cruise just because the spa and treatment prices on cruise ship spas are just always very, very high compared to what you can get on land. However, I know that a lot of you like to do it anyways because it's something really special and you maybe only get the chance to do it on a cruise. And I wanted to check it out on Carnival and on the Disney ship that we were on the week after that to compare it and to see, all right, for this price, what do you get? For this price, what do you get? Does it compare? And what are the things about it that make it kind of worth it? And what are the things that I still think, you know, not worth it? So there's a video coming up about that as well, not only about the individual experience in the spa on the Carnival Sunrise and the individual experience in the spa on the Disney Dream, but also comparing them to each other. And let me just tell you right now, there was a huge surprise about the whole thing. So stay tuned for that video. Uh, but so that massage cost, sorry, I'm, I'm skipping around here just because it's not really in the order. So the spa was, 118.45 plus the 28.75 which was the automatic tip that I had no choice it was automatically added to it so a 50 minute massage was like a hundred yeah like a hundred forty dollars almost not worth it not a bad massage but it's just not not worth it anyways that's not what this video is about so going back what else did I spend money on that day I um, there was a two dollar fee to have room service delivered which I think is fine less than on many other ships um, and then I gave the uh, person who brought me the room service two dollars as well so looking forward to show you that video spoiler alert the food on the ship was very good but the room service mm -mm, not good all right there's something showing up here that I'm confused about it is the Sunshine D room SBD served in dining room aft. Oh, okay, I know what that is. We did go to the main dining room one time on this cruise. You guys know it's not something that we usually do, but I wanted to see what it was like and I wanted to get information to show you guys as well. So we did go to the main dining room one time and I decided to get kind of a fancy glass of wine, which was really good. Spoiler alert, the food and the service in the dining room was really good. Video coming up about that as well. And yeah, this was my, yeah, so I had like a 16, a $15 glass of wine plus, a, you know, a dollar tip that I added to it. and. This all came to a total of $512.12. Kind of confused about this here. It says then 370.67 was, oh, I see. It's because, it's because of the credits I had from Louise and this refund of taxes, fees, and port expenses, which I still don't understand. And then they had, I don't know, I, I had booked the spa package before I got on board and they, I don't know, somehow they refunded that, I don't know. And yeah, so in the end, it was actually $370.67. So we had a great cruise. I got a massage. I drank all the drinks I wanted to drink. Like I really didn't hold back. We didn't go play bingo this time, which is something that we often do on a cruise. I didn't buy any t-shirts or anything like that on board. You know, most of what I bought here was for, you know, was at the bar plus the internet and you know, a little bit of room service um, fees plus the, you know, the automatic gratuity. And so altogether, the cruise itself cost around $610 for the, yeah, for the four nights plus 370.67. So, hey Siri, what is 371 plus 610? It's $981. So for this, for these four nights on board and, you know, basically five nights or five and a half or four and a half days on the ship, I spent, yeah, around 900, between 900 and a thousand dollars. And, you know, when I originally booked the cruise, I thought, you know, this is really inexpensive. But when I add it all up, I think it's still less expensive than most of the cruises that we've been on and definitely, definitely less expensive than the Disney Dream. But yeah, in the end, I guess it wasn't like a huge, um, you know, like a huge savings or a huge difference compared to Norwegian Cruise Line or uh, Royal Caribbean. And, you know, this is the only the first Carnival Cruise we've done and there have been Royal Caribbean and, and Norwegian Cruise Line 
uh, cruises that we've done that have been around this price. There have also been many that have cost much more per day. Um, our MSC cruises have been around this price, but we enjoyed our experience on Carnival in almost every aspect much better or much more than our experiences on MSC. So just throwing that out there. All right, so before we get to comment on your comments, I want to tell you about something that also has to do with money. I told you about this $100 that I had added to my casino card, right? Well, I won a lot of money in the casino on board. I won a jackpot of over $300 on one slot machine spin, and then later I won even more. And that was all from that original $100 that I had put on my card. And the way that the casino works on Carnival Ship is there it's like totally cashless. You just get like credits booked onto your card and you put it in the machine and then you tell the machine how much you want to play with. Very new, very fancy. I've never seen any other casino that works like that actually. And at the end of the cruise on the final night, I still had a I had lots of money on my card. And if I had thought of it quicker, I would have taken the cash that I got from the cashier's desk on the last night, gone down to guest relations and said, here, please use this cash to settle my account. And I didn't do that. So I still have here in Germany, all this cash. One, two, 320, 40, 60, 80. 380 US dollars that I won't be able to use until the next time I go to the United States. Luxury problem, I know. But yeah, so technically, technically I won more money than I spent on the cruise. Bonus, and of course this isn't something I can promise will happen to you and it usually doesn't happen to me either, but here we are. And now comes the time on Sunday Sofa Time where I comment on your comments live on air. In last week's Sunday Sofa Time, I went through my expectations of what I thought the Carnival Cruise was gonna be like, and then I compared them to the reality of it, which was, yeah, there were many things that were a very positive surprise. So go back and watch that video from last week if you're interested in that. And the first comment I want to read here is from somebody I actually met on the Carnival Sunrise, Catherine Cox Mims. It was so nice to meet you. We met making some amazing tacos at uh, the Blue Iguana Cantina. Thing, so a place that I was seen many a time. Catherine writes, hello, I really enjoy your videos. I was on the sunrise the same time as you and we actually met getting food at the Blue Iguana Cantina. I remember. Agreed, the food was great. The entertainment was great. Our service was great. This was our first cruise ever and the Carnival Sunrise delivered. I'm so happy to read that and I'm so glad you had that experience as well. We are actually looking at another Carnival Cruise late summer. That's how much fun we had. Um, keep the videos coming. Hope you had a cucumber sunrise at the Alchemy Bar. They were the best. Catherine, you know, I, I would just say, go for it. Book another Carnival Cruise. You're probably gonna love it, but just, when I think of how much fun we had on that cruise and how much we liked it, just, you know, keep the expectations in check. Um, some things might be, you know, like with any cruise line, um, you know, things kind of go up and down depending on the ship, depending on the route, depending on the other people on the cruise. And um, it sounds like you guys, just like us, had an amazing time on the ship. And, you know, just be prepared that when, when your expectations uh, are, you know, like that high, that maybe um, some things on the next cruise won't be as great, but that doesn't mean it's not going to be awesome anyways. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like when anything is amazing, it's like the next time can, can hardly ever be that good, is what I'm trying to say. Next comment is from Sight Girl. She writes, Morgan, how long have I been telling you to cruise with Carnival? Like forever with extra consonants. Glad you had a good time. I love Carnival. Yes. Okay, I should have listened to you sooner. I'm sorry, but thanks for pushing me. We had a great time. Last comment is from James Fabrizio. James Wright, not sure if you were aware, but Carnival has a Serenity deck, adults only, for the sunrise, and it's on deck 12 forward and deck 14 forward. Yeah, um, I checked out that place. I walked through there a few times. That was a place where all the sun chairs were like reserved very early, and you know, I thought it was cool. I just was missing, you know, a pool. 
Uh, love your videos. They really help my wife and I prep for our first cruise. My kids also love your cone lady. <laughs> um, that's nice to hear. MDR and man overboard videos. Thanks for those compliments, James, and say hi to the kids. Cone! All right, everybody, I'm gonna wrap this up here. This has become a very long video again as well, but I'm glad to have done it for you. Let me know what you think about all this in the comments below, and I will see you next week here in front of the red sofa for another fun cruise, travel, whatever related video. See you then.